Hi, thanks for joining today. I'm Joe Peterson. I'm the Vice President of Cloud and Security for Clarify 360, and I'm excited to be here today. I'm talking to Spiro Xanthos, who is the VP of Product Management for and Observability for Splunk. And we're going to talk today about observability. How are you doing today, Spiros? I'm great, Joe. Uh, glad to be here talking to you. Yeah, thanks for thanks for joining. Um, so, Spiros, you've got a super interesting background. Tell us a little bit about you. Sure. So, uh, I, I work for Splunk. I am responsible for observability, as we call it, which is our set of products uh, addressing, let's say, this market. Um, before that, I was a founder of a company called Omnition that Splunk acquired. Omnition was an observability uh, company. We're also the co-creators of OpenTelemetry. Uh, and before that, I started two more companies, including a log analytics company, actually, that VMware acquired in 2012. So I'm quite familiar with, let's say, monitoring and uh, what we call now observability and its evolution for the last uh, 15 years. Very interesting work, for sure. And, uh, you know, I was stalking your LinkedIn page a little bit. I saw that you have a master of science and uh, master's, master's degree in computer science, and you were a PhD dropout at the University of Illinois Champaign, Urbana. Um, and that's because you started your first company, right? Correct, correct. So I was uh, I was in grad school uh, at the University of Illinois uh, at Urbana-Champaign. And uh, actually, I started my first company together with uh, two other PhD students and my academic advisor. And uh, I, I ended up dropping out of my PhD to do that. And that was the log analytic company I mentioned. Uh, it was called Pattern Insight. Uh, we did that for five years, and then VMware acquired us in uh, 2012. That's great. So pretty clear to me that technology acting as this enabler for business is exciting to you. Yes, big time. Okay. Um, so moving on a little bit, in May of 2021, we saw Splunk launch a new observability cloud. And observability has become this trending term in the industry, like a lot of others. But it can mean different things to different people. So. For our audience today, can you clarify what observability is and why Splunk, you know, has this stake in the ground as it relates to observability? Yes. So observability from the control theory perspective, let's say, is let's say this ability to measure or understand the internal state of a system by examining its outputs, right? So we can say that the system is, is observable if the current state can be estimated like closely by only using the, the outputs. And effectively, uh, it is a very good description for what we're trying to do with telemetry data that is emitted out of infrastructure and applications, right? So now, why observability, I guess, in our specific example, right? Why developers and SREs and IT professionals should care about it? So. Uh, in my experience and in what we're seeing, let's say, in the industry is obviously um, with the cloud, with microservices, with containers, with serverless, uh, with all this amazing open source technology we have uh, built, uh, we can innovate faster, we can have higher velocity, but also we have increased the complexity of the systems we built quite a bit, right? Both infrastructure and applications. Everything is now software, changes very, very quickly. Uh, so you have, uh, maybe you might be releasing software multiple times a day and you might be doing this uh, in a distributed application fashion. So uh, to keep up with all this, all this complexity, we need actually step function improvement in, uh, let's say, the systems that we use to monitor, understand and troubleshoot these systems, right? So that's observability. Uh, in some sense, the monitoring tools we used in the past, maybe we good, were good enough for simple systems, right? Maybe monolithic applications and kind of static infrastructure but actually that cannot keep up with the complexity. So we need, uh, let's say, a much better inference, if you wish, of the internal state of a complex system uh, to be able to monitor and troubleshoot it effectively. So we can have the confidence to keep up with this high velocity of uh, software release and, uh, and oftentimes like large scale systems. That's a great answer, thank you. And so the idea of observability feels way more actionable than visibility. How is observability different than visibility? Yes, so uh, going back to what I just described, right? So uh, if you have a simple system that you're monitoring, uh, oftentimes the failure scenarios you will encounter 
uh, are not going to be either that different or that many, right? Like the, the states of the system, maybe are not that many. But once you start now uh, connecting, let's say, distributed microservices or services on top of dynamic infrastructure, like uh, the dependencies you have, uh, or the, the transit closure of all these dependencies can be a, a huge number, right? So what happens is, in practice, uh, the failure patterns are very complex and very difficult to isolate, right? So it's not sufficient to be monitoring, let's say, for uh, known problems. It is extremely important that you are able to, let's say, uh, quickly uh, connect symptoms to a problem and solve the problem when an uh, unexpected uh, failure scenario occurs, because this is the commonplace now, right? So in these complex systems, every time we have a failure, it's most likely a new failure that we haven't seen before than, let's say, something we have encountered in the past. So in that sense, that's I think observability tries to raise the bar in what type of visibility we can have in a, in a complex systems of this nature I described. And because I, I guess I use complexity quite a bit, it doesn't mean that the application has to be huge, right? Even a smaller application built on containers and microservices it can still be fairly complex. And when you add on top of this, let's say that you might have a lot of users interacting with the system. Oftentimes, you want not only you want to understand, let's say, if there's a problem with your backend or your application or your infrastructure, you want to understand what is the impact to your users as well, right? So it's this end-to-end -end, uh, visibility you want to have into everything that is going on. So it feels like Splunk is very forward in this. They realize that there's a problem and they're placing this priority on observability. Is that how you see it? Yes, uh, big time. So. Uh, Splunk obviously has been in this space, let's say, since, since our origins, right? Like we started by uh, building a, a very flexible uh, data analytics tool for monitoring and troubleshooting uh, IT systems. And uh, given that we have a large customer base and we're very close to the problems our, our, our users face, they commonly realize that uh, there's this, as I said, step function increase in complexity and we need the equivalent step function increase in, in let's say, the technology we use or improvement in the technology we use to address that, right? So uh, Splunk has made a huge investment, acquired actually six companies in this space over the last uh, three years, including Signal Effects and Omniscient, uh, the two companies that uh, were acquired a year and a half ago, and this is when I joined Splunk myself, and we made the priority. So, uh, and here our perspective at Splunk is that uh, it's not just that the complexity has increased, but also the other uh, challenge that our users are facing is that Oftentimes, they have to rely on mul multiple monitoring tools, maybe something to monitor network, something different to monitor infrastructure, an APM tool maybe to monitor their application. And all these generally are disconnected, rely on some sort of a proprietary, maybe instrumentation or data collection mechanism. So this results in silos. And as a user, I have to oftentimes jump between these different tools to troubleshoot the problem, right? And now, when you're in a situation like the one I was describing, where you might have multiple services interacting with each other, it becomes a nightmare, right? Like, I have to create a war room, <laughs> probably wake up multiple people, maybe in the middle of the night, to try to isolate where the problem might be coming from, right? So given that, Splunk's perspective has been that uh, uh, we should bring all of these tools together, ideally. So metrics, traces, and logs, if you wish, or the ability to cover, let's say, infrastructure, application, users, uh, including actually uh, understanding what is the impact of end users, but also developers as users, right? Like meaning uh, how we alert people, how we help them identify issues, right? So that's what observability is for us. It's a fully connected uh, application. It uh, It is actually open telemetry native, as we call it. So our data collection uh, and instrumentation mechanism is all open source and open standards based on open telemetry. And uh, in our backend, we can fully connect, let's say, all these signals so that uh, you use, let's say, the same application for monitoring and troubleshooting in, uh, infrastructure application, et cetera. Um, and we, so we're trying to move, let's say, uh, our ability to, to do this better by connecting all these signals, right? So instead of doing all the troubleshooting in your head and jumping between multiple tools to figure out what's happening as a user, we try to essentially connect them and instead of just giving you data, try to, to, to help at least uh, get you closer to answers. That's great. Like you're pulling the puzzle pieces together and it's a full stack approach and it feels really forward. It feels like based upon what's happening with cloud bidding, the amount of spend that's occurring in organizations, um, the forward part beyond just the ease of use and all the important things for the teams that are going to happen is that boards and executive teams are going to start expecting this information 
faster and quicker. Is that a fair observation? Yes. So let's say uh, if I'm, let's say, the CTO of an organization, as an example, right? Obviously, I care a lot to drive my business, right? So what do I care about? I care like so, uh, velocity, agility, all of that, right? So at the end of the day, to me, this translates to confidence, right? And I need to have the confidence, let's say, if I'm the CTO, I need to have the confidence if I'm the developer releasing the next release, right? Of, of a, or the next version of a, of a, of a particular service. So I, I think observability helps achieve that. So, so we can move faster and we can, uh, let's say, address the, the needs of the business um, without having to worry, let's say, that our systems might break in a way that uh, uh, would be difficult to, to, to troubleshoot because of this velocity. And generally speaking, to me, observability is an interesting technical problem because of the huge volume of data and the complexity, right? Mm -hmm. And I also think that's why it kind of makes sense. There are amazing open source solutions actually in this space, probably well, maybe like, extremely interesting innovation happening, but also it, it, why it also makes sense for a commerce like Splunk to focus on it because uh, many commerce don't want to be in the observability uh, business, right? Building their own tools. So they, they'd rather use something that works out of the box, right? And obviously mm -hmm. they can do either, but uh, in many cases, it makes more sense to focus on their business as opposed to trying to put together these tools, given the complexity and the data volume we're, we're dealing with. We're already collecting actually petabytes of data a day <laughs> at Splunk for, for observability purposes. Right. Um, you know, and one of the questions that people might be asking is, is this tool just for enterprises? Yes, good question. I kind of uh, uh, mentioned this earlier. So. Uh, we as a company, obviously, are focused on uh, being able to serve some of the largest enterprises in the world. Like, uh, I believe 91 of the Fortune 100 companies are Splunk customers, and they rely on us for IT, DevOps, and, and security uh, needs. Uh, but although we can do that, it's not actually exclusively for enterprises, right? Observability, uh, let's say if I was starting a company today, I would think about observability from the get-go, right? I would try to put the right uh, telemetry collection in place, Probably I would use, not probably, I would use open telemetry for that. And I would set up, let's say, uh, a backend system for monitoring that, all that telemetry. Uh, so it is for, for everybody who's uh, building, a, let's say, uh, on modern infrastructure, at least, right? So on the cloud. Um, and obviously, you can start small and, and increase and expand and change tools over time. But observability is a must have for any modern application, in my opinion. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, clear what the technical implications of this are and how that might Im positively impact the team. But if we look at the end user, if we look at the average practitioner, if we look, you know, we touched on business leadership a few minutes ago. If we look at that business leadership team, how is observability going to impact those folks? Yes. So um, I guess observability, I, mean, I kind of mentioned this, but observability has to do two things, in my opinion, for, for our users, right? First of all, um, need to give them um, uh, real time, let's say, visibility into application, infrastructure, services, everything that's going on in an environment. And in, in second, it has to do that in a way that uh, when a failure happens, uh, uh, I can very, very quickly isolate where the problem is coming from and solve it so that I don't have, let's say, downtime in my application, right? And uh, uh, that failure might happen in the infrastructure, might happen in the application, might happen in the interaction, a specific interaction maybe a set of users have with my application, right? So I need to be able to uh, isolate very quickly where it's coming from. So it has to provide all this coverage and uh, the ability to quickly connect the dots when something goes wrong. Um, so I guess what is the benefit, right? The benefit is, as I said, uh, if you do observability, at least the way I'm advocating, which is to fully connect metrics, traces, and logs so that you can monitor infrastructure, application, uh, users, et cetera, is that um, it is uh, essentially, it, it helps it, it helps us do uh, our job better as, as our recent developers, right? So what I mean by that is, let's say today, I have a, a scenario where maybe one of my services uh, is degrading, right? It might be coming slower, it might be start erroring. So usually what I have to do is, uh, uh, start, let's say, examining the system by asking questions. Maybe I'll check traces or I might check logs or I might try from the metrics to infer what's happening. But usually the way I do this as a, as a user is by stating a hypothesis based on my own knowledge and experience 
and asking the system to, to give me to validate or invalidate, right? Let's say it has become slower. I might examine some traces to see if something is going on there, right? But that's a very inefficient way. And as I said, oftentimes it means that I probably have to use a tool to check traces based on something I've seen in another tool that maybe gives me metrics. And maybe I have to jump to yet to a third tool to see if something, if there is an error in the logs or something of this nature. So instead, what we're trying to do with observability, at least at Splunk, is have all these uh, uh, data telemetry, let's say, connected. So instead of just uh, giving the ability for the user to, to ask questions and validate their, invalidate their own hypothesis, try to start guiding them to where the problem might be. Like to be very specific, let's say uh, you have an issue where uh, one of your microservices has, start, has become slower. So typically, especially if you have uh, both metrics and traces in place, we can tell you that, oh, maybe you should actually examine this upstream service that seems to have started the problem and the problem has propagated to what you are looking, right? So at the end of the day, what this really means is that give you all the tools to get to the answers as quickly as possible. So you can really have the confidence to, to, to I guess, to keep the velocity or to maintain whatever velocity is appropriate for your business and not have to worry about, as I said, uh, monitoring and troubleshooting, but focus on the business uh, that you're in and like, uh, let's say, write software or spend time uh, developing software so that, and not just uh, focus on uh, how to keep your systems reliable. And of course, if you're an executive, let's say, as I mentioned, uh, th that maybe gives you the confidence to, to or the, the, both the agility and the confidence to, to keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, it sounds like observability helps your team spend more time innovating and less time fixing problems. Is that fair? Correct, correct. That, that's exactly the, the premise of the whole thing, I think, right? So uh, provide essentially the best possible visibility into a set of software systems so that you can uh, uh, focus on, uh, I guess, keep innovating, let's say, for, for what matters for, for, the, for, for your business without having to have the, the concern that if something goes wrong, you're going to be... Uh, uh, fixing problems or fewer, let's say, fire drills, generally speaking, and uh, faster time to resolution or the diagnosis of a problem so that you can focus more uh, on your business and uh, what you maybe enjoy doing or innovation around that. That sounds like it's going to solve a number of problems for, for folks. So thank you so much for visiting today. And I look forward to what's next. Thanks. Uh, thanks for your time, Joe. And uh, love the questions. Thank you.